Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow, till I finally prove it Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving Keep my head up when I act, head up, that's a fact Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, it's your girl Orphea And I'm back at you with another video So for all of my new subscribers, welcome, welcome to the Trophy Nation for all of my existing subscribers, guys, girls, thank you so much for your continued love and support. For all of you who are not yet subscribed, stop holding us up. Go ahead and hit that subscription button along with the post notification bell so that y'all can be notified as soon as these videos drop. Now for this um, video, I will be talking about basically finessing yourself into your dream job or just finessing yourself into a job whatever that job may be so while i'm doing that i'm going to be doing my face routine for tonight i kind of changed my face routine um to what was recommended to me when i went to the spa and i did a facial so i'm changing my face routine to that recommendation so they recommended this to me and i've used it before it's really good um and i really like the results so yeah this one it comes with you know four steps it comes with the antibacterial soap it comes with a toner it comes with two cream um and one for uh, moisturizing and the other one to fade dark spots so this is what everything that comes in the box look like so it's this little bar soap here this little toner here and then these here and it comes in steps so it tells you step one step two step three and step four i'm going to be using my five in one beauty care um, massager to basically apply everything. This comes with five different heads. It has, I'm not sponsored by this, I'm just telling you what I'm using. So it comes with five different heads. It has the, the motor the thing that holds the motor. Then it has the brush and it has a massager which I'm going to be using. <clears throat> it has a sponge for your eyes and under eyes and then an overall face sponge. And then it comes with, you know, this for basically calluses and rough spots and stuff like that. As you can see, I have a lot of discolorations on my skin as it relates to that because I keep picking away at my bumps. But anyways, I stop there because, like I said, it's not like I'm being sponsored by any of these things to be giving y'all so much information. That's not what this video is about. So, okay, I'm gonna wet my face first. Hold on. Okay, so my dumbass thought I was still recording when I came back. I thought I hit record and it didn't. So. I basically am halfway through my skin routine and telling all y'all um, how to finesse your way into a job, not freaking realizing that this bitch was not recording. So I already washed my face with this, using this. I was gonna, you know, scrap the video and start it all over another day, but no, let's, let's continue. Then I put the toner on using this head now i'm gonna put my face cream on so we're moving on to stage three so we are halfway through which means i was halfway through the whole conversation when i realized my dumb ass wasn't even recording <laughs> but anyways so let me get back because there wasn't you know so in finessing your way into a job the first thing that you need to do is you need to prepare your resume that's the very first thing you need to do you need to prepare your resume you need to put it together in a you know 
in the proper professional manner in order to send out. You don't want to give too much information and you don't want to give too little information either because you don't want to be considered as overqualified as much as you don't want to be considered as underqualified. Um, so you need to put everything in your resume that is going to relate to the job that you're going for. Once you have prepared your resume and you have somebody pre-checked your resume and it's all good, probably watch a couple of videos on resumes, blah, 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 blase, blase. And you feel like, okay, you're confident with this resume that you're about to send out. It's very professional. It's well edited. It's, it's done properly. Um, the next thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to send off your resume now when you're sending your resume to these companies um say for example you want a managerial position and you're going for a particular company for that managerial position you need to make sure that you send multiple resumes to that one company and it depends on how badly you want that job that will dictate um, how often you send it and for how long. So you can send your resume to that company every day for a month and you're going to send two to four resumes each day. Now, the reason why I'm saying that is imagine this, imagine the job is there. If I obviously it wants workers, so they're going to be advertising to gain people to come and fill the position, right? So you're not the only person that knows about it. So if a hundred people send in their resume and you send in your resume and you only send one resume in, that's a one in a hundred chances that your resume is going to be looked at. So you're not even guaranteed that somebody saw your resume. That's the reason why a little trick that I like to tell, um, like my students and, and people who are really wanting a job and come to me and ask me, I will tell them send, find first find a company, find the job that you want to apply for. Once you do find that job and you do find that company, send them multiple emails, two to four resumes per day. That is if you don't have someone to physically take your resume in and hand it to the person in charge of reviewing those resumes and calling for interviews. If you do not have that connection, your next best bet is to send in two to four resumes every day. That heightens your chances. Now, this is what it does. You need to remember that it's a human being that is going through these resumes. My ass ain't sitting down going through 100 resumes. No, especially if I get 100 resumes a day, 50 resumes a day, 25 resumes a day. I, my ass ain't going through all of them. I'm going to go and the one that ca catches my eyes the most, those are the top 10 candidates that I'm picking out of it. It's one position. So you send your little one resume in, um, it's going to be flooded and buried into all these resumes that's coming in every day to me. So in order to make yourself memorable to the person who is in HR, because I have been responsible for hiring people because I have been in that position already. So I understand and I know how it, it works and how they operate. And if you send in, say your name is Chanel Walker and you be sending me four resumes every day, periodically. You're not going to send four resumes all at once. You're going to send two, in, probably two in the morning, one in the afternoon, and one in the evening, or two in the morning, two in the evenings, right? So you send in four email, four resumes every day to my email. Obviously, at some point, I'm going to see one of those, or I'm going to see two of those, or I'm going to see four of your emails and your name is going to keep popping up. So subliminally, your, your name is stuck in my head. Now you're like somebody I know because, hey, I know this name. So every time I go check in and I see it, I know this name. So even if the first two or three emails I wasn't going to hit on your name, now I'm really curious about what you got to offer because you're sending in so much resume. I want to see what this person is about. So if John Paul comes in and he's more qualified and he sends in his one resume, I'm not even gonna notice John Paul because now Chanel Walker got me all curious. I wanna know, she's determined. She, 
she, she'd probably be the best fit for this company, right? Because remember, these people don't know you. They don't know nothing about you. They don't know your work ethics. They don't know. They don't know. So you got to give you got to do something to make yourself memorable. And if you don't have someone to bring it in physically for you and say, hey, look at this, you know, then this is your next best bet to do. Send multiple emails. Now, my recommendation is send four email, four resumes per day for two weeks. You can go for a month if you like, but my recommendation is two weeks four emails a day, five days a week for two weeks. And that will leave an imprint on the person's mind who needs to be checking these emails. Because if I see your name here and then tomorrow I come out my mouth like, oh, wait, I know this name. Where did I see this name? And then another day I'm like, I know this name. Wait, she said, I better, let me check her out. Then I'm going to, you, you just forced me to open up your email. And so I did. Now I'm going to go in with step three. So this is the hydrating cream. Um, it brightens and even skin tone. So that's what I'm going in right now with. So yeah, that's the first thing. So now you secured yourself an interview with me because I'm curious to know who you are. A little bit goes a long way. So you see this little jar here. Don't let it fool you. It can last you a long time because all you need is this little drop right here. You don't need more than that. Put a little here, a little here and just spread it around. You really don't need a lot. You really don't. So don't worry about the tiny little containers. It can last you for a really long time because you don't need a lot. So now that you secure the interview and you've gotten called to come in, even before you've gotten called to come in for the interview, the next thing you need to do is learn your resume. Learn your resume. You'd be surprised the amount of people in the past that I've interviewed that really don't remember what the hell is on their, their, their resume. So the next step you need to do is learn what is on your, what you put in your resume. Um, when you went to school, what year you left school, um, what jobs you had, what year you started the job, what position you held in the job, your responsibilities, why you were in that past job that you were in, um, and moreover, why you left the job or why you were fired from the job. Personally, me, if I was ever fired from a job, I'm not going to put that on my resume. I'm, I'm seriously not. You're not going on my resume. But that's me. But yeah, um learn your resume so after you have secured the interview you need to ensure that you learn your resume you know what is on your resume and once you have done that and you've learned what is on your resume and how you're going to answer the questions that they ask you in pertaining to your resume the next thing that you because you need to be prepared to answer a question like um, what are your hobbies? Tell me a little bit more about yourself. That's the question. That's an open-ended question that people, they love to ask that question. And that question may seem like it's easy to answer, but when you're sitting there and you're, you, you tongue tie, you don't know what to say about, what should I tell you about myself? Um, the companies are going to want to know if you have kids, if you're married, if you, how you're going to get to work, you know, how far you are from work, how you're going to get there. Um, are you going to be on time? They want to know that because your presence ups their productivity and upping their productivity means that you, I'm going in with step four now, step four, sorry, step four, focus, it's not focusing. Oh, it's not focusing. So this one is the dark spot and tone corrector. So this is to basically correct your skin tone. And again, a little bit goes a long way. So you really don't need a lot. You really don't. So this little tiny bond here will last you for a really long time. So, and you can see I have a lot of dark spots and discolorations that I'm trying to get rid of. So, yeah. Anyways. 
So you need to be prepared to answer all those questions. How are you going to get to work? Um, they don't even matter to them how you're going to get, get from work, but they want to know how you're going to get to work, how you're going to get to work on time. And they're going to want to know like, um, if you have any kids, if it's going to be an issue for you, being that you are a parent to get to work on time or to leave work, can you work overtime? Can you do holidays? Can you do, you know, stuff like that? They're going to want to know things like that. And you need to know how to answer those questions. And you need to know how to answer them with confidence because let me tell you something. As a person who worked in that area, who was responsible for hiring people, I saw through all the bullshitters that were going to be problematic. You'd be surprised. You learn real quick. And if these people have been doing it for a while, you better know they can pinpoint your ass. Sometimes that is what stops you from getting the job. That's what enters you. You think you answered everything to the T, but you didn't. So know what you're going to say there once you get the initial interview. The next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to know a little bit about the company. You're going to want to know the company's history. You're going to want to know um, the board of directors, the owners, the CEO. You know, you, you're going to want to know if they're involved in any community projects, any little thing like that. You need to know about the, the company's business ethics, the company's mod, motto, all of that. You're going to need to know. A little bit on all of that so when questions are asked you can talk they can see that you're well educated you are invested in this company you are here to be um, a valuable member of that team right so learning and knowing about the company is always a good thing so you need to do your research on the company beforehand so that you can further help to finesse your way into securing a second or a third interview because most companies nowadays you don't do one interview you do two three interviews before you actually get the job especially if you're wanting a high profile job um while in the interview as well they're gonna ask you if you have any questions for them and if they ask you this question never say no because then you just come across as a people pleaser rather than an independent thinker who can be able to solve problems efficiently. So always have two or three questions for them. And that question could be like, what are the standards hours are like? If you're managing, if, if you're going for a managerial position, how many staffing would be under my control? Should I get this job? Um, you know, what are your compensation packages like? Stuff like that. But you don't want to be too overbearing with it and you don't want to be too smirky or uppity with it. You still want to do it in a nice, polite, you know, friendly, kind of jokingly kind of way. Not really. You're not joking, but you want to be soft with it. But you need to have questions nonetheless. Another question that is very, very important to ask is, are you going to call me regardless if I got the job or not? Because I would hate to be sitting around waiting on you because I really would like to become a part of this team. I would really hate to pass up on another opportunity thinking that I have, I, I have an opportunity here when I really don't. So will you be contacting me? So that's another question. Always ask that question. Um, if they're going to contact you regardless. So we've gotten sending out multiple resumes to the same company out the way, learning your resume. We've gotten that out the way, learning about the company. We've gotten that out the way, asking questions, being friendly, being polite, you know, basically try to be relaxed, try to act like you are already a part of the team. And I'm talking to you, my good friend, but we're just having a professional educated eloquent conversation with each other and this is how you finesse your way into your second interview now your second interview is not going to be as tense as the first interview it's not going to be a whole bunch of questions but at the so this is where you level up a bit more and you make sure that you know the company even more at that point 
So the very the same things that you do in the first interview is the same thing you're going to do in the second interview, basically, right? Um, make sure that you understand what environment, the work environment that you're going to go into as it relates to what they portray out there. Now, um, the next thing that you have to do after you have ask these questions and stuff like that and, and interview is over. If they tell you that they will give you a call, you you ask them when to expect a call. So say they, they tell you, oh, we're still doing interviews, so expect us to call you in a week's time or two weeks time. You give them those two weeks and if you do not receive a call from them, you call them to find out the status. I did this one time where I went to a company. This is my first managerial job, y'all. I was going to work um, at Margaritaville. And I went to the interviews and everything like that. I did the interview with the general manager and assistant manager, assistant general manager. And um, they told me that they would give me a call. Basically, everything was looking good, blase, blase. I went home and I was waiting on a call. I did not get a call. And I did not get a call in the time frame that they said I would get a call, but they had given me their number. So I took it up on myself to give a to give a call back. And the general manager was like, okay, come in tomorrow. I went in tomorrow thinking that I was gonna be, you know, doing a third interview when really I was going into work. I started working that very day. I started when I went in. And he told me what time I should be there. And I went in and I went to say, okay, I want to see X person. And as soon as the X person, they were like, okay, get this, get this, get that, start working. I was like, now I could have passed out on that opportunity right there. We have to remember that the people who are doing this, they are busy people. They are working people. They have their families. They have their friends. They have their own problems. And then they have work. So if you don't take it up on yourself some of these times to, um, give a call back to find out the status you probably just throwing away a good opportunity baby so make sure that you follow up with these jobs if you don't get a call in the time frame that you should i'm just putting on this i just put on this head this is the one that promotes blood circulation um i could have read all of this here but i think i gave you all a brief overview of it already but this one is to help to promote um better circulation in blood circulation and, and collagen in your skin so this is the one i'm going to go in with and i'm just going to go in with it on a low setting so that is one way you finesse your way into a job so that is one way that you finesse your way into a job you gotta be like i said looking for a job is a job in and of itself and i'm saying that like i said and i forgot that i did this whole thing recording not recording thinking i was recording but looking for a job is a job in and of itself so if you're thinking that oh it's not it is it is a job to look for a job to search for a job to secure a job is a job in and of itself. And if you're not willing to do that job, you're not going to get anywhere. Ooh, I'm sorry. Not unless you have some connection. Mommy or daddy or auntie or uncle has some connection and make a call for you and you get a job. Apart from that, mm -mm, not going to work. So that's one way to finesse your way into your dream job. So you're going to find your job. Find the job that you want. And once you find the job that you want to apply for, go ahead and send in multiple resumes. Now, there is another way that you can finesse your way into a high profile job. And that's with building yourself a high profile connection. you're going to want to meet the owners of these companies and the directors of these companies. That's the second way. The second way is aligning yourselves to come in contact 
with the owners, the somebody who is a board of director, a CEO, you know, someone high up in the company, and you want to make that person your friend. Now, the first thing is you need to find these people in order to make them your friends, right? And how you go about finding these people is by going to where these people hang out a lot, going to their favorite bars or favorite restaurants, uh, mostly favorite bars because people are mostly open up to talk if they're at a bar rather than sitting down and having a meal. And if they're sitting down to have a meal, more than likely they're not there by themselves. So that's not good to open up, but like at the bar area, you need to find out, okay, who is the director or, you know, the CEO or CFO or CEO or whatever, whatever high profile job um, they have in whichever company and you need to find out where that person hangs out. It's, it sounds like a bit like stalking, but it's really finessing. And um, find out where they hang out, strike up a conversation, be approachable, strike up a conversation with this person once they're alone having a drink or something. And then, you know, basically find out what they do. You're going to act like you're completely oblivious to what they do and be like, oh, really? It's very blah, blah, blah. This is blah, blah, blah. And, you know, get in a way to exchange contact information and then boom. You have a high profile friend who can get you into your dream job. That way it's, it's very simple, very easy. Um, but it takes you doing your research and going out and spending a bit of money. That's what that does. But the other route, which is the, the longer route, um, that way has been tried and proven. Um, the, the other finesse route, that way have been tried and proven. That's way more simpler for me because all I do, I pick up my phone, I make a phone call, a blase blase, I, I'm, I need a job, blah, blah, blah. And they'd be like, oh, cool, just shoot me a resume. And by the time I shoot in my resume, I got a job. I probably did one interview, if I did any, and I'm working. So those are the ways to finesse yourself into a job. Now, yes, this video is a bit lengthy because I had to break it down into steps as to what to do, how to go about getting your dream job or any job for that matter i do hope that you enjoy this video if you've gotten this far don't forget to give my videos a thumbs up comment share and subscribe y'all if you're not already subscribed know that i love you guys i love you so freaking much thank you so much for supporting me i appreciate you guys so much for that and we're at 839 y'all so Keep them coming in. I love y'all. Bye.